Sorry, Sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. Like I said, this is only the third live stream that we're doing. We've got all new equipment. We've got new software programs that we're trying to do all this, like, multi-camera, picture-in-picture stuff in, and we're still trying to figure it out. So, you know, give us a couple episodes. We'll get into the swing of things. Like I said, here at Chef Beardman Live with Happy Girl Mantra, super chill and relaxed. You know, we're just having a fun time. Just two friends cooking dinner, eating some food, talking with you guys on the internet. That's what this is all about at the end of the day. It's not about, like, you know, trying to put on something perfect and, you know, just stage to every T cross and every I dotted. This is not that. This is imperfect, and it's perfect in its imperfectness. So... Guys, I've got that little ponzu sauce made, so just to go over that again in case the mic was off, I did a fine mince on some lemongrass, and I added the coconut aminos, which is a soy-free alternative to, co to soy sauce, because Happy Girl right here cannot have soy. So we use coconut aminos instead of soy. But it is a little bit sweeter, so you kind of have to adjust your recipe accordingly. So what I did is I had the uh, lime juice, the uh, lemongrass and the coconut aminos in there. Um, so what we're going to do, this is the sauce for our tuna. I've got our tuna right here already ready to go into the pan. And I'm just going to glove up, season our tuna, and then give it a sear in our ripping hot pan that we got going on back here. And I'm just going to put a splish splash of avocado oil in the pan. Now, avocado is a high heat oil, and it is a very healthy oil for you, too. So I'm just going to give this tuna a little seasoning with some togarashi spice, which is a Japanese seven pepper spice. Season both sides, because like uh, our boy Emerald said back in the day, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, my tuna doesn't come seasoned on both sides. So we're going to season both sides of our tuna like Chef Emeril would like. So now that we've got that all seasoned up, we're going to transfer over to our pan and we're going to just spread that oil out and then go straight into the pan with our tuna pieces. Take this over to the sink. And we're going to let that sear on both sides for like a good minute maybe a minute and a half depending on how hot the pan gets per side maybe only 30 seconds this seems to be going pretty good and you don't want to take that tuna too far it's good tuna so why ruin it happy if you don't mind i'm just gonna reach for my tongs right here real quick. out of your way entirely chef no worries get you a little bit of b-roll so since we're going to do some mocktails tonight, I'm going to enlist Happy Girl to uh, help us make those mocktails. She's going to kind of help me bartend tonight, as it were, a little bit. So she'll get some some time other than just in the picture in picture for you guys. So we're going to flip that tuna. It's been about, what, like 30, 45 seconds? I'm just keeping some motion in the pan here, guys, so the heat... See, when you got a hot pan going, you're going to create a hot spot if you let the food just stay in one spot. And if you move it around, you kind of keep the heat evenly distributed all over, and the food actually sears quicker this way. And you get a more even sear on your meat. Let's take a look there. See, look how... How good that got already, that fast. Chef, could I borrow you for some technical stuff? Yeah, of course. They want me out of the bottom right corner and somewhere else. Okay, so what we'll have to do is do that. How's that? Boom. 
Is that, that good? good? Yeah, but they say there's still an echo. So I don't understand. Well. Ah, it's mine. Got it. Is that better? So we're taking our tuna, guys, and we just got it seared. I'm going to let it rest for a minute. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a little wipe down. Keep everything clean. So I've got some purple sticky rice that I've already prepared over here. And I'm going to get our plates set up. We said bowls for the tuna, right? Yes. Yes, we did. So I've got these nice little bowls right here, guys, that I'm going to set up into. Do a fun little molded rice action. We like to make it look pretty. You know, doing stuff like this at home is a fun way for you to, you know, entertain your friends or if you want to do like a date night, you know, and keep the budget kind of low key instead of like going out to the restaurant and dropping two hundo. 250 on a night out at a restaurant, you know, impress your SO with, you know, cooking them a nice dinner and, you know, doing the, the niceties of, you know, a little fancy plating here and there, you know, just to give them that restaurant quality feel. Make them feel special, you know. Put that love into the dish. Okay. So we've got our rice kind of set up right here, guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice up some tuna. And since we're keeping the plate small, We're going to do three right over the top. A little snack. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, Delicious. guys, I'm going to warn you right now that togarashi spice that I put on there didn't have any salt on it. And I didn't salt the tuna intentionally because the ponzu sauce is a salty sauce. So you don't want to make the mistake of trying to over season. And then when you're going to eat, it, it's a salt bomb because you accidentally salted your tuna too much when you're using a salty sauce on top of it. So I'm just going to save that piece over there maybe for Odin later. So I'm just going to take the cutting board guys and I'm going to clear it off and I'm going to get us ready to make our mocktail. So this is, like I said, our play on a margarita, but not lemon and lime. And I've got some fun broccoli sprouts to go on top of that. Oh my gosh. Oop. Oop. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? And then we're going to grab our Anzu. Oh, yeah, just do a little action Johnny drizzle right there on it. And then we're going to make our mocktail, guys, and then we're going to sit down and enjoy this course before we move on to the next one. I've got that right there to kind of rim the glasses because behind door number one right here, we've got... our bubbly Topo Chico. We've got some nice lemongrass, kefir, lime, leaf infused simple syrup. 
Now that's made with agave syrup, kefir limes, and chopped up lemongrass, kind of like steeped like a tea in distilled water. And uh, then I add agave syrup to, you know, to the sweetness level that I want for it. So what we've got here are our nice little glasses. I'm going to just get the rim moist right there. And then we're going to dunk into our lemongrass and salt. So this is kind of like that play on the margarita, like we said, where you do a salted rim, right guys? But we're, we added lemongrass to our salt so we can echo those flavors into the syrup. Pull it towards the middle. They're not seeing what you're doing because of the picture and picture cam. Sorry. No, it's my bad. I'm so sorry. And we've got these nice glasses right there now. So Happy, if you want to come over and give us about like a two ounce pour of syrup into those guys. And then if you have the bottle opener for that, we'll pop open the topo. It's a kangaroo paw. The <laughs> noise. Good day, mate. <laughs> when I was a kid growing up, Crocodile Dundee was like my favorite movie, man. And when Crocodile Dundee 2 came out, I was like, wow, how could they even make it even better than the first one? Like going to Australia is how you make it better, like and staying there for an extended period of time. Can I show them our ice cubes? Yes, of course, show them the ice cubes. So I got some really cool silicone molds, and I made a bunch of little um, confetti lemon and lime zest cubes. I'm making a mess. Those things were a pain in the booty to demold. <laughs> they were. I was so told. She did I all the work. Gems. I just heard everything. <laughs> uh huh. These are lemon and lime zest um, gems as well. And then we're going to go ahead and put our syrup. Let's go ahead and go one more ounce. One more ounce. Yeah. Her chef. This is all new, you know. We're just we're just playing right here. We didn't. We didn't pre-make any of this stuff. We're just going off the cuff. Pretty fun. Experimentation. Absolutely. We did get fun containers, though. <laughs> yes. I, I love those acrylic milk cartons. They are so fun. It takes me back to middle school and elementary school. And mm -hmm. And then right. we're just going to top it off with a little of that, and then I'll get, a, get our favorite friend a little knife to stir. And I realized we don't have to completely change our set. We can just focus on the happy cam. Okay, that's cool too. Mm -hmm. Would you like some more topo? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Perfect. Is everything going good, guys? I'm seeing. Uh, I'm actually seeing some activity in the chat. I can't see what it is yet, but Let's I see that there see. is activity. I see some can people. You take my last bottle. Hmm? Did you take somebody's last bottle? I did not take mom's last bottle. I <laughs> bought my own two bottles that I ended up not needing. <laughs> yes, because Happy has them. Yes, she does. So, where do we want to sit? We are just... In our gonna, usual spots? Yeah. I'm just going to move this, and then we can just move the Happy Cam. Come on. Come on down, bud. Come on. He's like, I really like this part, though. I really like the food part. Odin, Odin, Odin. Okay, so we're going to remove a few things from scene. Just reset the odal cakes. Okay, we've got our drinks. We've got our tuna. I just have to get us a couple of items to eat with. Bada boom, bada boom. Okay, and then we're gonna go. All you gotta do is switch one. the inputs. Just over here. Yeah. We might want to tilt that oh, down. Yeah. This the Jeep food. I only have two hands working on it. Oh, I was about to do it. I got you. All right. Let me know when. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Bada boom. Very good. Um, 
can I temporarily end the mainstream? Hmm? Can I temporarily move this angle? Oh, yes. Because we're... Um, that might be the time delay. No, just hold on. Oh, you're using your cam, and I put it as the picture yes, in picture. Can. Okay. So we're just trying to get around there. So I might have to. Well, hold on. Let it. It's we're super laggy. So just hold on a second, so we can see where we're actually at. Yeah. So we want to be this main camera. Okay. Now sit down so we can see if it's. <laughs> Catching up. Okay, now we should be picture in picture. Sorry, guys. Like I said, it's all trying to uh, figure out this whole new camera setup, you know, with the program. Funny that my mom thought I took the last ball of her. <laughs> Yo, Tiffany is in the house. Yo, what's up? We can hear you, but it's super echoed. I hope. We're way down here. Okay. Okay, there it goes. Perfect. Sweet. Okay, much better. Okay. So, Tiff, what up? Tiffany's one of my really good friends from back in the day at River City Grill back in Punta Gorda. She was a server there when I was back in the kitchen, just a little wine cook. And we had such a tight-knit group. Like, I can't remember. Like, we would literally go out drinking every night of the week Oof. as a group. Like... Three, three to four of us cooks in, like, the whole serving crew <laughs> out of the bar, like, as yeah. a huge gang of people just showing up. And, uh, yeah, Tiff and I have been through quite a few hurricanes together, too, just like everyone oh, down good. there in Punta Gorda. Okay, so, yeah, you want to snap a pic before we pick sure it didn't happen? Mm -hmm. So we're going to snap some pictures of the cocktail in the main uh, entree here for the first course so we can... Uh, get some fun stuff to post up after the show for you too, guys, because we're all about that added content, you know, here at Chef Beardman Live. It's going to be good stuff. I love the ice cubes, though. They look so good in there. Thank you. So if you guys have any uh, questions, you know, just... Uh, be sure to type them in the chat. Let us know. Um, I can do five hundred at work, but for two at home, I'm totally in the weeds, dude. That is so true, man. Because we're used to like cooking in large numbers, and then we have to like downsize everything in our brains, and we're like, "Well, how does this like work cooking for just two people?" Huh? <laughs> Steve O saying, "What up, Tiff?" Oh, good. Get the chat talking to each other. You guys need to talk to each other too. They're really good about that. Yeah kind of like a social hour online too right exactly we should send out the recipes ahead of time and be like cook and eat with us oh now you're asking for too much work for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so dig in yeah cheers first cheers Salut. oh lemon grass in my beard mm. Mm. that is good yeah the salt on the rim with the sweetness mm. from the drink Right? That's it's kind so of just good. like a margarita, but now we're not going to get like stupid wasted. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but like, we're, we're going to get super hydrated, that's for sure. We're not getting tequila drunk. <laughs> I've seen that before. It's not a fun time. Yeah, I mean, you think it still has that essence of lemon and lime to it, it's super familiar in flavor. Mm -hmm. It's just not like as acidic as a lemon and lime drink would be. No, it's so good. I love the sweetness of the agave. Yeah. Such a wonderful touch. Which shows to which goes to show you guys, you don't have to use, you know, like white sugar to make your simple syrups. You know, you can use agave syrup, maple syrup. Um, if you're fancy and want to use a refined sugar, you can use Demerata. Tequila makes me naked. It makes everyone naked, Steve-O. 
what's like the famous quote? Um, Tequila makes her clothes fall off. Oh, this is a country song. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's my past coming up to haunt me. <laughs> I think Happy Girl likes that mocktail right there. It's so good. All right. Okay, let's dig into that tuna. So excited. Mm. So guys, I seasoned mm -hmm. that purple sticky rice with a little bit of mirin, rice wine vinegar, and I sweetened it with the agave syrup and added a little salt to it like you would with when you're seasoning sushi rice, or sushi rice, mm -hmm. sorry, mouthful. So it's like that perfectly like salt, sweet, sour, kind of hit to the rice too. And then you've got the seven chili pepper spice on the tuna with the hemp seeds and the little bit of spice from the broccoli sprouts. So, I mean, in the ponzu, the salt comes from there. Pretty dang good. It's super good. I love the tuna. I love tuna. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Oh, this. yeah. Of course. Nothing but a trip to Whole Foods, y'all. You can get Saku blocks in the seafood section at your local Whole Foods most of the time. Or if they don't have it on the shelf, usually you can just talk to the fishmonger and they can cut you up a piece of saku block mm -hmm. to take home if you want to do some sushi and usually they have sushi grade salmon there too guys so not to like toot whole foods horn or anything like that but you don't have to go to the sushi restaurant to be able to do this kind of stuff you know you can do this at home and not have to spend an absorbent amount of money to try to get good you know fish mm -hmm. and i'm actually going to eat this time i promise I won't just leave half my plate. Mm -hmm. Is it Ooh. tough to find seafood in CO? Or Colorado? Not really. No, uh-uh. Well, we've got purveyors that do the same thing. I can get the same Hawaiian fish program flown in for like 25 bucks a pound like everyone else can. Actually, I think it's up to 35 bucks a pound now. Um, but yeah, seafood's readily available here. And actually, there's some really good sushi places down in Denver. Mm -hmm. huh. Fun fact, mm -hmm. Colorado has more scuba divers per capita than any other state because of how easy it is to get from Denver to either coast. It's an eight-hour flight to Hawaii, four hours to Mexico, hmm. four and a half to Florida. Wow. And I think from there, a couple to... The Caribbean for some really awesome scuba diving and snorkeling. I wonder why there were so many scuba diving stores around mm -hmm. the area. It's like, are these people like diving at the reservoir? Mm -hmm. That doesn't. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can get open water certified at Arapaho, Bay, um, Arapaho Reservoir. Mm -hmm. It is terrifying. <laughs> the water is really, really hot. So I got certified in Santa Rosa, New Mexico at the Blue Hole, mm -hmm. which was gorgeous. Very, very cold. <laughs> I bet. When you lived in Florida, did you ever get to go to any of the natural springs? Um, yeah, there? we went to Silver Springs up in North Florida a lot. Mm -hmm. My grandma is, well, my great grandma was in Micanopy, Florida. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of springs pretty close to there. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there's one called Manatee. Oh, yeah, there's Manatee Springs. We've been there a few times. Yeah, we do the glass bottom boats. Nice. Mm -hmm. Or the hop in the tube and just mm -hmm. go down the trail. There are some fun things to do there. I'm bummed I never oh, went to. Oh, and the most Subarus per capita, Steve says. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Colorado does have the most Subarus per capita. I have other comments to make, but I will refrain from making them. <laughs> I am going to call it right there. I think that's sufficiently cleared my plate. I think I won. Did you save room for the next dish? I did. But not that I'm trying to race you to the finish. But <laughs> I'm just... Chefs are naturally fast eaters, guys. We have limited time, limited resources. It's usually just shove it down your face and get back to work. I have to learn how to slow down when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thank you. I can also say, hold on, it's a lake in Osceola County. Let me clear my mouth and I'm going to say it properly because I'm really proud of it. 
It took me five years to get permission to call it its abbreviation. I'm going to have to take my time on that drink. That's good. I'm not mm -hmm. getting up yet. <laughs> I actually want to finish this guy. So, I grew up in St. Cloud, Florida, mm -hmm. which is next to Kissimmee, which is in Osceola County. We have two lakes, East Lake Sahapalagika and Lake Sahapalagika. Sahapalagika is in St. Cloud. Mm -hmm. You are only allowed to call it Lake Toho if you are a native and grew up saying it correctly or you say it correctly to enough people to get permission to call it Lake Toho. Okay. And I'm very proud to still be able to do it. And I've been out of Florida for 22 years now. Wow. And not looking back either. <laughs> no. I do need to go back and see my mom, but that'll be a fun trip. I, not that I ever doubt myself when I come up with these like harebrained ideas for recipes sometimes, but that lemongrass salt really did come out way better than I thought it was. Like I had expectations that it was going to be like kind of cool, but it really did add another level to the drink. Well, and what I love about it too is it really adds a pop to the entire drink. Right. Which is something I think is so important about choosing your beverage with your food. Right. How many times have you had food sent back because it tastes weird and then you look at their drink order? Mm -hmm. Or do you even think to right. tell your servers that that matters? It does. Pairing does matter, guys. You know, it, it, you have to put a little bit of thought into even when it's not alcoholic. You know, especially when it's alcoholic, but, oh, my mom loves your outfit. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, the important thing is, is that there are items that tie mm -hmm. the drink and the dish together. I intentionally added lemongrass to both dishes. You know, there's the agave syrup in the ponzu sauce and in the drink itself. So there are these connections that bring everything together when you taste it as a cohesive, you know, like take a sip, take a bite, take a bite, take a sip, you know. I probably say it wrong. I've been in Colorado. Wow. Oh, I left St. Cloud 22 years ago. It's like, I haven't been here 22 years. I say it Ure. Like hooray, but Ure. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. So I think we got into the groove of things with the whole technical side now. Mm -hmm. We got mics working. We got no echoes. The echo problem, guys, is that sometimes the way that this program works is that the I forget to. The problem, Chef, <laughs> was we forgot we had three yeah, cam. Exactly. And I forgot total. to mute the third cam and there was an echo on that mm -hmm. third cam. <laughs> and then for a while there, I muted the main view. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't do Oops. that either. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I cleaned my plate. Yes, you did. Now we got to do is clean our glasses. I've been waiting all day. <laughs> right? This is like my favorite thing. Is favorite when we sit part down and eat the good food. Right. And see, like I said earlier, you don't have to go out to the restaurant. You can, but you can do this stuff at home too, guys. You know, like uh, that's the whole point of doing this here with us at Chef Beer Man Live on YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be with us every time that we go Thanks. live. You know, um, you're on low power mode on your iPad. Just so I you know. got that. No problem. And uh, Just in time for a reset. So I'm going to finish my drink here, guys, and then I'm going to go back around. We're going to start our second course, which is going to be the lamb kebab. Which Odin taste tested the lamb, and it is Odie Cakes approved. So It is. We're good it. to go. There he is with his tuxedo. Mm -hmm. All right. So now. I don't like tequila get... drinks, but I'll drink the heck out of that guy. Absolutely. 